Here comes V1. V1, they've lost an engine. Looks like it's engine number two. I'm using the rudders to maintain center line. And with that center line, with my with my foot placed on the center line, now I'm gonna rotate. Where this one is going to be a uh, engine failure, what we call an E fato engine failure at takeoff. All right, so just before takeoff, we're gonna lose an engine, and then what's gonna happen is we're gonna have to deal with the engine uh, failure, stabilize the aircraft, get the autopilot going, and then we're gonna have to do whatever we need to do to secure the engine, see if we can relight the engine, and then. Uh, potentially if we can get the engine back we come back uh, we, we continue on our journey we're actually we've programmed in a flight plan from Dubai to Muscat to Oman in Muscat and uh, our secondary uh, flight plan has us uh, coming back to Dubai all right so everything's set up in the box uh, ready for our departure our V speeds are going to be 147 147 and 152 with a thrust reduction acceleration altitude of 13,000 feet we will be doing a flex takeoff today of 68 flaps one with a trim of up 0.7 is our trim for today all right everything's set up we're going to be taking off and using the uh, Anvix I believe it's the uh, Anvix 5 Golf SID and uh, in case of an engine failure, the, the procedure is going to be we will maintain runway heading uh, and we will climb to the minimum safe altitude in that area, which is going to be 3000 feet. All right. And uh, and and basically what's going to happen is at 1500 feet, we're going to we're going to level off the aircraft, accelerate and basically just make sure that the uh, that we can clean up the aircraft secure the engine climb to the minimum safe altitude and then bring it back uh, in for a safe landing in dubai airport all right so guys that's uh, that's the plan and uh, let's uh, let's jump right into it everything is ready the lineup checklist has been completed the initial altitude of 4000 feet is set i'm gonna release the parking brake now and give a little bit of forward pressure on the side stick right over there and um, yep let's go let's put 50% on the uh, power stabilized the aircraft's rolling and now we're gonna go click and click Manflex 68 SRS runway auto trust blue all good we're rolling down the runway now so all we gotta do is use the rudders keep us nicely in the center and everything's looking absolutely fine Remember, when the engine fails, it's going to be at rotation speed. Do not be in a hurry to rotate. There's 100 knots, cross-checked. What you need to do is stabilize the aircraft first and then rotate, okay? So here comes V1. V1, they've lost an engine. Looks like it's engine number two. I'm using the rudders to maintain center line. And with that center line, with my, with my foot placed on the center line, now I'm going to rotate. There we go, give a little bit more rudder, maintain runway track, we're climbing away now, so we've got a positive rate of climb, landing gear can now come in, follow the SRS, make sure the flight director is perfectly in the middle, we're going to pull and set the runway head track which is 119 degrees and I'm just literally keeping my foot on so engine number two, which is on the right hand side, has failed. So what I need to do now is I am using my left rudder to make sure that this stays coordinated. This little blue thing has to come in the middle. There we go. And as I do that, I'm now going to trim the rudder to the good side. I'm going to give myself about five units of trim as required. And as I take my foot off, the aircraft should stay coordinated. All right, I'm losing airspeed, so I'm gonna bring the nose down, keep it on that SRS. And as you can see now, I can take my feet off the rudders and I've given myself enough trim that the rudder is staying coordinated right there. It's in the middle. There's 1,000 feet, I can go ahead and turn on the autopilot now. All right, so with the autopilot on, all I got to do now, basically, is go ahead and do the exercises all right so as you can see engine number two it's master caution engine two failure and what we're going to do now is we're basically going to uh do the ecam actions all right so engine mode selector goes to ignition that's this guy here ignition 
Thrust lever number two to idle. You put your hand and you ask your, your partner to confirm that it's number two. He or she will say confirm number two and you bring it back to idle. When you do that, it marks it as done. Engine master number two to off. You put your finger here and you confirm it's engine master number two. They'll say confirm and you pull and you go off. All right. Now the next step is if there is damage, engine two, five push button, push, all right? Now here you're gonna have to see these parameters, okay? Where you're going to basically, you see there's no N1 rotation, there's no N2 rotation, there's no fuel flow. This engine is damaged, it's not even windmilling. So because there's damage, we come up here, confirm it's engine five, engine number two, five push button, they say confirm, lift, push, and then fire the squib. And now the engine is secured, all right? So when you say engine secured, or when they tell you engine secured, you'll say stop ECAM actions, and you're now currently just about 1,500 feet. We're gonna push the level off by pushing the VS. You get VS zero, and now we're going to clean up and accelerate the aircraft to, uh, to alleviate the stress on the, on the good engine, all right? So as we're leveling out, as you can see here, we've got uh, the S speed coming. So very soon we're going to be able to um, uh, get the flaps to zero. There we go, we've got S speed. So I can go ahead and call for flaps up. They'll say speed check, flaps up. They will disarm the spoilers and they will uh, basically, and they'll put the two outer lights off. Now I'm going to wait for green dot speed. I'm going to set MSA 3000 and pull and I'm going to pull and keep it on the green dot speed right there and now it says trust lever MCT so I'm gonna go back and forward and we've got trust MCT auto trust wide we're climbing to 3000 feet using green dot and the good engine can now relax a bit doesn't have to work too hard all right now We've been maintaining the runway track. By now, we would have called in our Mayday, 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 Mayday. We've got an engine failure. We need to return back to Dubai Airport, squawking 7700. And what's gonna happen now is we're basically going to, we're gonna do our briefings. We're gonna talk to each other and decide what we wanna do. The smartest thing to do right now would be to turn back and head back towards Dubai. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand over control communication to my partner, who's not there, it's me and we're basically going to make a left hand turn downwind back towards the airport on a heading of 300 degrees and we're going to maintain 3000 feet this is air traffic control giving us these vectors now all right they're, they're going to clear the airspace and they're going to give us priority and help us come back in all right so now that my partner is flying the aircraft the autopilot is on everything's looking good we're at a safe altitude we're we have secured the engine, everything's good. We're gonna continue with the ECAM actions, all right? Engine number two failed, so now we can clear that. Now we're gonna read the secondary failures. Land ASAP in amber, and the air bleed system, we've got no pressure from the right-hand side, but we've got the left-hand side providing air pressure, which is bleed air, which is fine. So clear air bleed, they'll say clear, we clear it. Now the electrical system, we've got, we've got the Gen 2 offline, but we've got Gen 1 carrying the load for both AC1 and AC2 for both sides. So what we can do is to alleviate generator number one, we're gonna start the APU. Push and then hold down the starter. And that's gonna start the APU. Once the APU kicks in, the APU will take care of the, the, second, the, the bus number two side, all right? So we can clear the electrics now by pushing the clear button here. Now the next thing is the hydraulics. We've got the low, we've got low pressure on the yellow hydraulic system because it's powered by engine number two. But you can see the PTU is, uh, the green system is pressurizing the yellow system via the PTU, so everything's good. We're gonna go ahead and clear the hydraulics now. Everything's good. Now we go onto our status page. Now at this point, I would tell my partner, okay, stop the status. Do we have any OEBs, any recorded failures before? We don't any checklists that we could do right now there is no checklist that's waiting for us except for the approach checklist later and also um, uh, there is no there are no computer resets that we can do right now so there's nothing that we can do about this the engine's gone we've already pushed that button which means we can't relight the engine so that's it 
So now, since there's nothing more we can do, we're going to continue reading the status. So status is avoid icing conditions. If severe ice accretion, minimum speed is VLS plus 10, uh, green dot. Maneuver with care. The landing distance procedures will apply. If no engine 2 damage, consider an engine 2 relight. That's, that's not going to happen for us today. And Cat 3 single only. That's our capability. The inoperative systems on the aircraft right now are the wing anti-ice, the Cat 3 dual, uh, engine 2 bleed, pack 2, generator number 2, and the yellow engine 2 pump. Those are the inoperative systems right now. So, if, if my partner is happy, we're going to clear that, remove the status, and that's it. We're now pretty much uh, done. We've secured the aircraft, we've secured the engine, everything's good. The aircraft is flying safely. We're on a we're on a heading right now back towards Dubai International Airport.